This is nice, I don't have to tell you to stand. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison, as we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. This is the word of the Lord. Go ahead and be seated. Good to be back with you today. Still feeling a little shaky, so I want to really just want to talk to you today, not really get too excited, hopefully, uh, in preaching, but that, that could be a challenge, right, <laughs> Kristen? Yeah, I just get excited. But uh, I just, uh, I, I, I'm for one, March 1st, March sounds awesome. Uh, to me, it sounds so much better in February. I don't know, February just sounds so cold and dark and, and fluey and all that kind of good stuff. So uh, I'm really, and I, you know, I was just thinking though with uh, February, you know, February's Valentine's and uh, it just seems like it's a, it's a, it's a month for, for love and all that. And I started thinking, man, we had a lot of love going on around this place uh, this, this last month. I mean, we started off February 1st with Rod and Lisa getting married. I don't know if y'all knew that. Did y'all know they got married right on March 1st? Uh, March 1st, February 1st. So, uh, you know, they got married. And then uh, last uh, a week from yesterday was Jeff and uh, Kim uh, were married, which was incredible. Sorry I missed that wedding. I was looking forward to, to being here to celebrate that special day with y'all. And, uh, and then uh, last Sunday, uh, here, here was Mark and uh, Debbie Pleasant, uh, renewing their their vows after 40 years of marriage and I thought it was really cool because uh, Renee she had messaged me oh I don't know maybe like a week or so maybe a week and a half before and uh, she said you know one of the things my mom has always been really sad about was the fact that she never got to walk down the aisle uh, they got married at a courthouse and so that was Renee's gift to her mom in particular because Mark, he knew that this was going to be. She was surprised last week, didn't know anything about it. And, uh, and I thought, man, that is, that is really so cool. So it's been a really a great month of love. And I just want to thank Dean for uh, filling in with the, the vows. It shows you how God works. I mean, he had just done the wedding for, for Jeff and, uh, and Kim the day before. And I thought, oh, Dean, man, you got the vows, man. Can you do this for me next Sunday? And he goes, yeah, I got it, no problem. And thank Aaron for providing the slide and also the music uh, for, for her to come down the aisle, which that was one of their special songs from way back in the 70s, uh, Dan Fogelberg and stuff. So it's just really great. And then last Sunday, I missed one of my favorite all-time song leaders uh, in Nathan. Uh, so, you know what, I mean, I, I'll, I'll be ready for you next time, but I want to thank Ryan for working with uh, Nathan uh, on that and getting him ready uh, for that. And, uh, and Ryan, how long have you been here? Five years and one month. Yeah, he's, got, he's not keeping track of time or anything like that. I think, I think today I'm beginning my, I think I'm beginning my 14th year believe it or not. Uh, I think it was March 1st, 2007 uh, was uh, whenever I, I actually uh, began. So, wow, that's been a long time. But here's what I was thinking about, Ryan. Okay, five years and a month. I, I don't know if the elders remember this conversation or not, but, but I can remember Ryan saying, okay, look, David, if you, if you can't preach, don't call me the night before. You remember that? Yeah. I need two weeks. I need two weeks to prepare, so don't call me. He got called last Saturday. Uh, matter of fact, I told him, though, when I got on the phone, I said, hey, don't worry, Ryan, I'm sick, but I'm not, I'm not asking you to preach, and blah, 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 but lo and behold, he did. 
Uh, and I just thought, what, five years to do for a person, right? Five years and a month. So that, that, was, that was very incredible. <coughs> and, uh, and if you haven't had a chance, if you weren't here last week and didn't have a chance to hear the, hear the, the lesson that Ryan brought, I thought it was very uh, powerful. I felt like it's something that, that, we, that we need. Uh, rejoice always. I listened to it. I uh, was very blessed by it. And I really got to thinking about one of the things that Ryan talked about in being joyful and having joy. You know, the Bible tells us over and over again to be joyful. But it's going to take more than just you and me saying, okay, I'm going to be joyful. Uh, that, that may carry you at the beginning when you go, okay, I'm going to be joyful. But I tell you, by the time you get into Wednesday of a week, after you said that on Sunday, uh, it's a little bit more of a struggle, a little bit more of a challenge. And one of the things that Ryan talked about in this sermon last week was the fact that we need to practice joy. You practice joy. And the same thing is true with faith. Faith that stays inflated. I was asked a question after two weeks ago, so that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, I used to rush through things and rush through sermons and thought, you know what, no, I can't do that. But I, I just thought, you know what, uh, I thought it was a legitimate question that was asked. And the question that was asked was, yeah, but you know what, the, the, the stories that you told from the Bible, even like Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, they, they got out of the fiery furnace. What happens when it doesn't seem like God is answering my prayer? What happens when it doesn't seem like I'm getting out of the fiery furnace? And one of the things I just want to say, when you think about the story of Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, who's that story about? Is it a story about Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego? Is it a story about you? About me? Or is it a story about God? And it's a story about God. Matter of fact, that's what this whole book is about. It's God's story. See, it's easy for us to look at the story of Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego where they were thrown into that fiery furnace. Are any of you going to be thrown into a fiery furnace, literal fiery furnace this week? Hope not. More than likely not. I would say probably 99.99999999% not, you know. It's not going to happen. So how many times do we just read that and we just kind of move on and think, wow, you know, I like that story and all, but, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be thrown into a fiery furnace. But it's a story about God, and here's what I want us to see about that story. It's that when Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego were thrown into the fire, They, when they got out of that fiery furnace, they didn't even, the Bible says, they didn't even smell like smoke. Their clothes were not even singed by the heat after the heat had literally melted the soldiers that were throwing them in, the guards that were throwing them in. They literally melted because the heat was so high. But yet, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, their, their clothes were not even singed. They didn't even smell like smoke. See, some of us, we're going to find ourselves in a fire this week. Not a little fire, but we're going to find ourselves in a situation just like that. And some of you, you're in that situation right now. So what's the story? The story is that God says, you know what? I'm going to protect you while you're in that fire. While you're in that fiery furnace, whatever that situation may be right now. I mean, it could be broken relationships. It could be a broken marriage. 
It could be situations where you're dealing with your, your kids and it's situations dealing with kids. And I'm going to tell you something, Sherry, now what we're learning is your kids are always your kids even though they're almost 25 years old. It could be finances. It could be health. So many different things. We find ourselves right in the fire. But here's the promise from our God. Our God has said, I will protect you when you're in the middle of the fire. You won't even smell like smoke. You won't even be singed by the fire. God says, man, I'm going to be your protector. And that's how we have a faith that stays inflated. The scripture that Sam read, and thank you again, Sam, for that reading. From, if he, uh, from uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Here, here, here's what it says again. He says, though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed day by day. For our present troubles. Anybody having troubles? They're small, and they won't last very long. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. So we don't look at the troubles that we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen, for the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. Now, from God's word, here's a question I want us to, to consider today. Are we physical beings? Living out some spiritual realities as we go through this life, or... Are we spiritual beings? Living for a very short time in this physical realm inside of these physical bodies. And that's not a trick question. Because here, God tells us, he says, you know what? Man, these outward bodies, they're wasting away. I can remember back in the day, even when I was like 45 or whatever, I could get the flu and not even miss a beat. At 65, it takes me 10 days. And I'm still not where I ought to be. You don't have to tell me my body, God, is wasting away. So what God is telling us, church, is that we are spiritual beings. We're spiritual beings that were intended to live forever. And we're intended to live for a very short period in this body. And I believe that's what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 3, verse 2. He says, repent for the kingdom of of heaven is at hand. Jesus, in calling us to repent, he's calling us to reconsider how we view life. Right? He's saying, hey, he comes on this planet and people are living just like what we're living. They're very busy. They're very active. Man, they're going here. They're doing this. They're, they're taking care of business. They're making money transactions. They're making a living. They're raising families. They're doing all these things that we're doing today. Even building brand new houses. But Jesus, right off the bat, he goes, repent. Making about face. Why? Because the kingdom of heaven is here. It's here. You need to reconsider 
the fact that we're not just physical, but we are spiritual beings that are living in this physical realm for a very short time. So we need to reconsider how we view life. And I said I wasn't going to get excited, and I already did. Whew. Just want to look at a couple of few verses, okay? Want us to think about these verses. Because of faith that stays inflated. needs to be practiced just like joy wrote down a couple of things here I didn't know if I was going to use it or not there's a lot of times I feel like that I didn't even write this down <laughs> Yups, I wish I had it. But here's the thing. We try and try and try to experience God. And we try to live for God. After a sermon like Ryan's last week, man, we leave out, and I'm gonna, boy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna be more joyful this week. Anybody tried to do that this week? I'm gonna try to be more joyful this week. I'm gonna try to rejoice always. I'm gonna try to have a faith that stays in place. You know what that does to you? It tires you out. It wires you out. Because we're always trying. Think about every time a brand new year rolls around and we start making all of these resolutions, these brand new resolutions. I don't know about your resolutions. I could probably look back 40 years ago and they're the same ones that I made 40 years ago. Because I try. And, and most of them had to do with God and most of them had to do with spiritual things. And I would try and try and try, but by the time March rolled around, I'd already given up on it because I had wore myself out and I'd failed so many times. We feel like a failure. It's not about trying. It's about training. It's about practicing goes back, Aaron, to the passage you used in, in Matthew, and I think it was chapter 6, about where uh, Jesus talked about building the house, building our houses on the rock and not on the sand. And Jesus said, whoever hears these words of mine. And I like the way Aaron, he paused this morning before he went on. I mean, you know, you're sitting here right now, and we're hearing God's word. But that's not enough. Whoever hears these words of mine, Jesus says, and puts them into practice. It's like a wise man who builds their house on a rock. And when the storms come, and we're all going to experience storms in our life of some sort. And there's the hardly rocks our world like losing a loved one. I know I still think about my daddy a lot. Matter of fact, every day. Sometimes you think it'll get easier, but sometimes it doesn't get easier because so many times I wish I could just talk to him. But you know what? You know what gets me through? It is God and it's building my house on Jesus Christ. It is practicing joy, living joy. Not just simply saying that I want to be joyful, but it's taking the teachings of Jesus Christ and making them real in my life. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. 
And if you have a Bible or you got your phone app or whatever, you might want to flip that on. That'd be okay, uh, as long as you're looking at the Bible. But in 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18, because we're going to look at a few past passages, and that's, that's all I want to do this morning. But in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, here's what Paul, through the Holy Spirit of God, says. He says, you know what? So all of us who have had that veil removed, we can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. See, Moses had gone up in the Old Testament up on the Mount uh, Sinai to receive the commandments from God. And while he was up there in the presence of God, guess what happened? Man, he just glowed. God's presence just shone on him so much that it just infiltrated everything about Moses. And when he came down off that mountain, he was glowing because he had been in the presence of God. And when you and I are in God's presence, then that's how the Holy Spirit helps you and I to become more and more like Jesus. That's what changes you. That's what changes me. It's not about trying harder. It's not about doing more. Man, we've had that kind of preaching too long, amen? God's Word says that we become more like His Son and we reflect His glory when we're in His presence. And it changes you. It changes me from the inside out. Flip over to the right a few pages to Ephesians chapter 4. Look at verse 20 through 24. And here, listen to what Paul says. He, Paul says this, he goes, but this isn't what you learned about Christ. Now, when you start in a verse like that, you're thinking, well, wait a minute, what, 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 what is he talking about? You know, this isn't what you learned about Christ. Well, here's what he says, we did not learn about Christ, and it's right up above that in verses 17, uh, 18, and 19. But, but he says right there, he says, you know what? He tells us, he says, don't live like the world. Don't live any longer like unbelievers. How many of us look like the world out there? How many of us live our lives like unbelievers and we look just like unbelievers? How many of us are, 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 are like the lesson that Ryan preached last week? Man, we're rejoicing always until something bad happens. You know, that's the way the world is, isn't it? The world is all hip hip hooray until something bad happens. And then all of a sudden the wheels come off. And he says, you know what? Don't live like that any longer. Their minds are full of darkness and they wander from the life that God gives because they have closed their minds and they've hardened their hearts against him. They live for lustful pleasure and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. Does that describe you? I mean, really stop and think about it. What is your mind focused on throughout most of the week? Is it about satisfying yourself? Is it about, man, I want this, I want that, and I'm going after it? See, so many times we look at scriptures like this and we think the worst. But in about just doing life, our minds always focused on things that are temporary. 
the things that are physical? He says, you know what, though? That's not what you've learned about Christ. So what have we learned about Christ? He says, since you have heard about Jesus, in verse 21, and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off your old sinful nature and throw off your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and your attitudes, put on your new nature, create it to be like God, truly righteous and holy. It's about training. It's about practicing. Hello, church, are we going to keep practicing what we've always practiced in life? And we find ourselves not experiencing God. Not having the peace that Jesus promises. A verse that's really become a, a, a stake in the ground for me is John 10.10, 10, where Jesus said, man, my, my purpose, I have a purpose. My purpose is to give you life. And not just life, but to give it to the abundance, to give it to the overflow more than enough. But he tells us, man, uh, the enemy, there's an enemy out there, and he has a purpose too, and he's a thief because he wants to kill, steal, and destroy what I've come to give you. So am I going to keep on living the way that I've always lived? Or am I going to get ready? And I'm today, you know what? If I've not done it before, I'm going to throw off this old sinful nature. I'm going to throw off this physical thinking and living that I've been doing. And I'm going to let the Holy Spirit renew me and renew my thoughts, renew my attitudes. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 through 8. Flip to the right just a few more pages if you're in your Bible. This is how we do it out at Galena Park sometimes when we're studying. Flip to the right. Flip to the left. <laughs> in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 and 8, He says, you know what, don't waste time arguing over godless ideas and old wives' tales. Instead, train yourself to be godly. You ever thought about that? I mean, here's the Holy Spirit saying, train yourself to be godly. How many of us during the week do we get all caught up in all of these silly arguments of people? How many of us get caught up here recently about this coronavirus? You know, we're just freaking out. I'm not saying that we shouldn't be smart or anything like that, but you know what? I mean, how many of us are just literally freaking out? How many of us are freaking out because it's affecting the stock market and it's affecting my stocks and it's affecting my, my money? My retirement. How many of us get on Facebook and we're arguing back and forth about the presidential election or any election? And then it goes beyond that, doesn't it? I mean, it goes to, to, to even where we shop or whatever whenever they don't have what we think they ought to have on their shelves or whatever and we just come unglued. I mean, all around us, we just are continuously on edge. And he says, quit wasting time with that stuff. This stuff doesn't matter. But instead, train yourself to be godly. Train yourself to be like God.
Think about that. And he says physical, physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better. Why? Because it promises benefits in this life and in the life to come. How many of us want that full life that Jesus promised us? And he said, man, this is my purpose, to give you life and to give it to you to the abundance. Oh, yeah, I want that. But how many of us are training to be like God? Or do we get in the middle of our week and all of a sudden we're not even thinking about God? We're thinking about self. I'm thinking about David. But he tells us, church, he says, you know what, man? If you, if you train to be like God, he says, and training for godliness, then life, he says, I promise, life is going to be better in this life and in the life to come. Church, we are spiritual beings. Who are intended to live forever and yet look how much effort and how much time and energy we put into this little part that is right here I had a couple other passages but you know what I think I'm just going to quit uh, I think you get the point You know, in Hebrews chapter 11, and I'll close with this. Ever since I was a little boy going to church, I always heard, man, Hebrews chapter 11 is God's hall of fame of faith. I was this kid that always liked to play cowboys and Indians. If I was the Indian, I was the good guy. If I was the cowboy, I was still the good guy. Used to love to play soldiers and war movies, you know, watch those, and we'd get sticks and go running out in the pasture and rolling around on the ground and all of that kind of stuff. I mean, I, I, am, I was 100% boy. So whenever they would talk about these heroes of faith, oh, man, I'd eat this stuff up. Man, Moses. Abraham. Oh, man, by faith they did these things. God bless them. But you know, one, some of them I never heard about is near the end of chapter 11. For some reason or another, we never really talked about these dudes very much. Because he says in verse 11, chapter 11, verse 36, he goes, but I'm going to tell you about some others. Man, they were tortured. They refused to turn from God in order to be set free. In other words, you can be set free if you don't just turn from God, but they refused to turn from God and they were tortured. Why? I mean, if, you were, if your life was at stake right now, And all you had to do to live was just simply say, you know what? To hell with Jesus. So that I can live. How many of you would do that? We go, oh no, not me. I'm, okay. What if you got a gun pointed at your head? Yeah, a lot of times, you know, and uh, honestly, how I many of us probably would because we're sitting there thinking about right now. We're thinking about the physical. But he says right here that these people, they place their hope in life, in a better life after the resurrection. Some of them they were jeered at, and their, box, and their backs were cut open with whips. Others were chained in prisons. Some died by stoning. Some were sawed in half, and others were killed with the sword. 
Some went about wearing skins of sheep and goats. They were destitute, and they were oppressed, and they were mistreated. And I love what God says here. God says, but you know what? They were too good for this world. You're too good for this world. Dan, you're too good for this world. That's what God says about you. And he didn't just say it. He showed it when he gave Jesus for you and for all of us. And he said, all of these people earned a good reputation because their faith, yet none of them received all that God had promised. So how do you have a faith that stays inflated no matter what? And it goes back to what our entire class that Aaron was teaching up here was about today. And I think it's going to be continued next week, and I really encourage you to come if you, if you weren't here today. It's eternity. Eternal. We're spiritual beings who are going to live forever either with God or away from God forever. And we're just in this little spot in history for a very short time. We're going to sing a song, Victory in Jesus, because that's where it's at, because of what Jesus did. And I think it was Mason, or no, it wasn't Mason, who, I forgot which one said it, uh, uh, it might have been Courtney's daughter. What's your daughter's name? Cora? Nope, nope. Oh, was it her? One of them said, you know what? The resurrection, Easter is about the resurrection. Jesus is alive. See, there's victory in Jesus. That's what I thought. Jesus is alive. We have resurrection. That's where victory is. And no matter what happens in this world, no matter what happens in this life, we have victory. Amen, church? So if you want to know more about that, or you want to talk more about some of this, or if you have another question, don't hesitate to ask. And I, I pray, you know what, I, my brain is kind of mumble jumble today and everything, but I pray that the scriptures we have looked at have given you something to think about that what we need to be about is training our faith to be strong, training to be like God. And that's all possible because of Jesus. If you need to come for any reason, why don't you come right now as we stand and sing. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from